Delbene. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to all of you for being with us today. Um, I'm very happy that we as a committee are taking up state tax issues in many areas of the law. The digital age has created new complexities and definitely at times illogical results where the law hasn't kept up with the pace of technology or the ways we purchase or live and do business. However, as someone who's had a career in business and technology and a former a revenue director for the state of Washington, um, I can tell you that from both perspectives, some of the bills we're discussing today seem to be misguided. Um, the physical presence standard in BATSA, for example, would favor large businesses that have a limited physical presence, but a huge volume of economic activity within an individual state. Meanwhile, shifting the state corporate tax burden to Main Street small businesses, along with manufacturing, natural resources, and service industries, businesses that create local jobs and pay local property taxes, um, it's easy to envision an environment under BATSA where the big guys are planning around and avoiding local taxes, all the while reaping the benefits of doing businesses in states across the country. Meanwhile, small businesses that are paying for the benefits of doing business in any given state are put at a competitive disadvantage. And this critical point goes to marketplace fairness, which we've been talking about, or the online sales tax issue, which really boils down to ensuring that brick and mortar stores that make up the fiber of our communities aren't penalized or put on an unequal playing field with out-of-state online retailers. Um, we, I know we've talked about this a bit, and Commissioner McGee, I wondered if you could tell us the economic impact this not passing legislation like marketplace fairness has on your state, and I also, would like you to highlight what that means to local jurisdictions, because we talked about state revenues, but this is primary revenue source for local jurisdictions, and I think it's important we highlight the impact there. Oh, absolutely, thank you. Um, you know, I've never been a big fan of passing a tax because the state needs the revenue. I'm more of a fairness person, and I think that the issue here is an unequal playing field for the brick and mortar versus the, the internet retailer or the online remote seller. So I would not want to say Alabama needs this law to pass because we need $100 million for the general fund. That is true and it would probably bring anywhere from 100 to $175 million per year into our state, city and county coffers. But that's not my point today. My point for all state administrators is we don't like to pass taxes or incur new regulations just to plug a funding gap. We think it's a fairness issue. We want to treat all business owners it with an equal manner. And this, and right now, there's not an equality issue when it comes to having a brick and mortar store in Alabama or any other state that has a sales tax. Now, to be clear, this is not a new tax. This would not be passing a new tax, as you indicated earlier. These are use taxes that are already owed. Since um, 1936. And you know, I went to a running store in my district, a uh, good example, brick and mortar and local community. People come in, try on running shoes, find the exact pair they need, and many times might leave that store and buy it online just because of the di difference between the amount they would pay with sales tax versus without sales tax. They're still a resident of the state, they're still buying it, but that shows you that we have an unequal playing field where there's a disadvantage from local, our local retailers. I assume you have scenarios like that that you hear about all the time. We definitely do. It's called showrooming, and it's, it's incredibly unfair because they're paying, the local business paying property tax, they're paying payroll tax, they're employing our citizens, and yet the profit margin is being increased for the online retailer than the brick and mortar retailer. So it's definitely a huge problem. We're seeing a great erosion of our sales tax base, and it's only because the way the product is distributed. The product is exactly that same pair of tennis shoes. But the way it's distributed means the state, cities, and counties lose out on that sales tax we would have other, otherwise received, except for the consumer who technically owes a tax, and we will still ask them for that tax. But can you imagine tracking down that kind of volume in order to get the same um, tax revenue had the retailer just collected it at the point of sale? And in a state like mine, Washington State, where we do not have a state income tax, collection is even more complicated because there is not that place on the form um, to, to fill out. It's a totally, would be a totally separate process, which um, makes it even more challenging and highlights how important legislation like marketplace fairness would be. Um, thank you very much. I'm, I'm running out of time and I yield back, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. The chair now